morning. This is Frankly Tarot, and we are going to do something a little bit different today, maybe a little bit more fun. I am on my, I think it is number four, cup of tea this morning. Today I am drinking, or this time, I'm drinking an oolong, and I believe it's called Eastern Beauty, and it's from Vietnam. Yummy. I drink a lot of tea, especially in the colder months. And where I live, the colder months are most months. Uh, and I use loose tea most of the time, about 99% of the time. So I thought uh, we would do something different and kind of just go through a little tour of my teapot collection. I have uh, seven out. I think that's it, eight. Uh, anyway, not quite as many teapots as I do tarot decks, but close. So um, where shall we start? Let's start with what I like to call the egg teapot. Kind of shaped like an egg. I like it a lot. It holds about one cup like this, plus a little more to top it off. And it came with a tea infuser, which is what I like to use with my teapots because it helps with the cleanup. I had stopped using my loose tea just because the cleanup was such a pain in the neck. Um, and this also has this little plastic seal, which a couple of my other newer teapots have. Uh, so it holds, um, it stays in place. See, it won't dry, it won't, it won't come off. Whoops won't come off um, as you pour your tea. Let's wipe that up. So that is my little eggshell. It's kind of this nice um, ecru color, which it's a little darker than it seems to be showing up. And it's shaped like an egg. And my husband picked this up at the little um, home deck store that we have here in town. It's locally owned and it's fairly, uh, it's pretty big and it's right on the main uh, shopping drag. So that is my egg, my egg teapot. Love it. Another sip of my Oolong Eastern Beauty. Me, I'm a Western Beauty. Yeah. Uh, next up is this antique teapot that I have. Now, I have it in my head. This is from about 1940. I'm gonna bring this up so we can see it a little better. But the shape is older. The shape, I think, is more like um, 1830 or 40. I'm not really sure. There are no markings. There are no markings on it. So, oh, there is something in here, but it's very hard to see. Maybe if I do a rubbing, I'll be able to see, figure out what it is. Can't tell at all. I do use it every now and again, uh, despite the crazing on it. It doesn't leak or anything. But I don't use it as much as I used to because I can't. Um, I can't put a. I can't put a infuser in it. I have to just put the loose tea inside or use a tea ball. I guess I could use a tea ball. Um, but this is the oval shape makes it a little bit um, harder for these sorts of things. So. I have to be in the mood, but I do like it a lot. I bought it on Etsy a few years ago. So that is my antique. I have another antique one, which we'll show in a moment. But no, oh, I actually have a few antique ones. Let's um, go to this one. It does have a top. So similar to the egg one, it came from the same shop, for life. Uh, it has, it came with an infuser, and you can kind of see, let's see, can you see, this lip here is fairly deep, com especially compared to, compared to the antique one. So it has an infuser that sits in there. It has the plastic seal. Could you stand be throwing the dishwasher, I think. And so it stays. The only thing is that when I put the infuser in and pour the water in, I have to be careful because this will go on and 
water will spout or tea will spout out. And then be careful about how much you fill it. Uh, fill these with water because the seal does make it adds a little pressure when you put the seal on. We have a little in our kitchen we have a little tea coffee breakfast station and the wall behind it is a uh, red a deep red so some of these <laughs> look really nice this doesn't look great against the red but I like it because it holds two full cups and um, the wall is fairly thick and it has the seal and it pours nicely. This egg one looks really nice against that deep blood red. Okay, how about this one? This one, the poppy teapot, which is Charles Vincent. Um, I this came with a strainer too. It's not a universal one. It's specific to this. I use it anyway, and the seal. Um, works only with the strainer, doesn't seal to the teapot. That's okay. The seal doesn't actually, um, I don't really care too much about a teapot having a seal. It is nice, but I guess I'm still a little old fashioned. I bought this to take to work with me and keep at my desk, but I don't, nowadays I just um, use a tea bag in the cup and throw it out. Normally I could use one tea bag for two to three cups, but I'm not fussing with it at work. It's just too much of a pain. But I do like this. It holds two cups and a bit. I guess I could get three small cups, like three tea cups, as opposed to you know a mug like this. So that's my poppies. Poppy. I love I love this this kind of illustrative poppy on it. I love that. Okay, another a crew. <laughs> Another A crew teapot. Now the little store downtown carries this whole line, and I've had others. I mean, teapots they crack and they break, so I don't have all the teapots I've ever had. Um, what is the brand on this? Kensington, Price and Kensington, I think. I like these because I like this. I like this just it's just a teapot, it's a plain old teapot. And, but the wall is pretty thick. The tea stays nice and hot in this and a couple of others I have. So if I make tea in the evening and don't finish it, don't finish the pot, when I come down in the morning, it, the pot is still a little bit warm. And I keep the house fairly cold, fairly cool at night in the winter because it's expensive to heat these houses in the north. Anyway, so this is your good old workhorse run of the mill teapot. And I think this gets a solid three cups out of it. All right, here's one. We were talking about teapots breaking, the lid broke, but I still keep it, and I'll tell you why. So this is, um, let's see here. I'm just going to raise the camera phone up here. So this is um, kind of an antique teapot. Uh, we picked it up. Came from an antique store, um, also right here in the town that I live, the little city that I live in. I can't really read the marking on it. Something New York, England, something New York. Um, it has this kind of um, painted right on top. I can feel, I can. F it's a little bit three-dimensional, the flowers are. Do not put this in the dishwasher. Now my husband bought this for me when we were first dating and we were kind of wandering around the antique store together and I picked it up and admired it. So a few, maybe later that week, it was 10 years ago now, he came back with this and a movie, if you know what I mean, and I think you do, we had a good time. Um, and I like, it's huge. I don't know how many cups, it probably holds six cups. I keep it because it has, you know, it has sentimental value. And I thought I had the other piece of the top, but I guess, I guess not. Um, but it holds a lot. So I use it in the summer to make iced tea, make a, just make a big batch. It doesn't need to stay warm or anything. So I do still use it for iced tea in the summer. 
which is coming. It is coming. So this is my my iced teapot, the broken lid. I hope I can find the other piece because I thought I had it. I mean, it just broke in two pieces. So I should be able to someday find the correct glue and glue it together. Uh, now, I, like I said, let me straighten this up a little. Like I said, I drink a lot of tea and I put honey in my tea, even like the fancy oolong stuff. I try not to put too much, but I'm addicted. So I have this honey pot. I bought it on Etsy and it's a little bit messy right now because it's honey. And I really like it, and I like it because it holds a good bit of honey. But most of the ones I had seen, just I was like, I'm gonna go through this in two days. I don't want to keep refilling the honey pot. Um, and I'm almost done with the honey in it. But I also have this very uh, nifty little, um, I don't know what they're called, honey spoon. It's not really a spoon. But this I bought, um, we were just kind of perusing the beautiful state we live in. I think it's neat. It's not going to focus. So let's get that out the way. I'm still really learning how to make these YouTube videos, so um, they're still going to be a little clumsy, I think, for a while. But I love this. I've had this for a good 10 years. And... Um, if I can find the Etsy seller who makes these, I'll link her down below because I do like her um, her work. It's modern, but it's not out there, it's really accessible. That's my um, honey my honey pot, which it's just gonna stay in frame, I guess. Where are we? Okay, this teapot also came from a little shop in the town, see where we live, and. See if I can raise this without messing up my whole life here. Um, came from an import shop in town. They import a lot of things from places like Bali, and it does have a top. And we also have um, cups and saucers that go with it. And the cups are fairly large. I think they hold as much as a mug. They're not like your English teacup. Oh, and I just want to show you the little. Um, creature on the that is the handle it's just so beautiful this holds four big cups we use this teapot in the evening um, a lot and we'll you know make a big pot nice pot of decaf and each of us has two nice cups and it stays hot it has a good, the wall is good and thick. And I, I use a infuser, but my husband will just toss it in there. But that's fine. I can easily like grab, get my hand in there and get the, um, get them out, get the tea leaves out when we're done. So this has been a great, it's, it's, a, it's decorative, but it's also a workhorse, which, which I think is, that's what I like in my life is to have beautiful, beautiful things that work like they're supposed to. You know, not just beautiful. Okay. This one is very unusual. It was made by a potter in North Carolina. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, her name was, I don't know if she's still alive. I hope so. I was friends with her daughter. Harriet Thompson. I don't know what the A stands for. But she um, signed everything H-A-T. And so I had a good friend when I was living down there. And I had met her parents. And her mother was a potter. And my friend brought this to me for my birthday one year. This was probably 25 years ago. Um, I dug this out just recently. It was packed away for a long, long time. And... So <laughs> I just finished saying I like things that are beautiful and work. This does not actually work very well as a teapot, but it definitely works as um, holding down the island. Yeah. I'm glad I'm going through this. I don't think I haven't really taken a good look at this teapot 
probably in 25 years. Here's the lid. It fits this little creature on the lid. I think we can see details pretty good. And then there's this kind of woven texture in here, which I, I suppose she just used by laying a piece of cheesecloth or other loosely woven cloth on the wet clay. Pottery is not a craft I have ever really done or know very much about. Okay, you can kind of see it right there. I love this. Um, and then it came with these two cups, kind of Japanese, oops, kind of dusty, Japanese style teacups. It's so simple and effective the, on the teacups, the decoration, just the swipes of um, color inside and out. You see that? Yeah. And yet it goes perfectly with the, um, with the pot itself. So this was a birthday gift from a friend of mine, from the potter's daughter, which sounds like it should be a really great novel, right? Okay. The last one is the one I'm actually brewing my oolong tea in it, and it is my favorite. Um, it still has a good bit of tea in there. So I can't turn it upside down to see if there are any marks. But it's, um, you know, it has this cobalt color, and this is like a, you know, three-dimensional bead beading along the gold and the ecru. And this holds, um, I would say, two two proper cups of tea, or more, because I'm on my second cup, right? So I think we're at three, three proper cups of tea. It's not very, th the walls aren't very thick, so by the time I get to the third cup, the tea's not as hot as I would like. And I do use tea cozies. This is my absolute favorite. I love this one so much. So this shape is just, you know, you just put your hands around it, pours beautifully. It looks great against the red wall. <laughs> Um, and like I said, I use tea cozies. Let's see if I can find my, this is my, I made this one a bunch of years ago and it fits this perfectly. So, oh yeah, nothing like a nice, but, <laughs> but compared to the elegance of the teapot, this is kind of, you know, it's homespun. And I don't, I knit a lot, but I don't usually do this type of color knitting, but I, this was so much fun. But you can see I've used it a lot. It's burnt, it's running out, it's um, torn, it's up here. And if you knit at all, you might um, have heard of the term steaking, which is used in this traditional fair aisle type, where you knit around and around and around and around, and then you go in with scissors and you cut your knitting um, and that's what I did here and it was scary but it was just tea cozy not a not a sweater so I did it wasn't that bad um, so th that is the tour of my teapots I hope you enjoyed it uh, I hope I can get this up my like I said I'm still learning the technology and my phone is has gone out on me two or three times while I'm doing this so Anyway, this is Frankly Taro with the Tour of the Teapots, and we shall do this again real soon. Thank you.